Hello, my name is Will Brando. I'm the chairman of the Association of Warm Season Grass Producers. And I'm here today in our first summer meeting at noon on Saturday session to talk about the association, uh, warm season grass, what the association has done, what we're doing now, and what we hope to do in the future. Warm season grass, or WSG, as I refer to it when I send out emails, is we primarily think of four different varieties, switchgrass, big blue stem, Indian grass, and miscanthus. There are other warm season grasses. However, these are the four primary ones that we concentrate on. Uh, there is a uh, sorghum, which is a warm season grass, but that's an annual grass. In other words, you have to plant the seed every single year. These four grasses, you plant them once and they come back year after year. They're a perennial plant. There was a tremendous amount of talk about warm season grass, switchgrass in particular, after George Bush uh, talked about switchgrass in a, a State of the Union address. However, uh, there was very little market for it. Everyone started planting it, but then they grew it and nobody had a use for it. So a group got together in State College about five years ago and talked about the problems with growing warm season grass and the fact that there was no market and decided to form an association. They formed the Association of Warm Season Grass Producers. I was on vacation in Costa Rica at that time and was unable to attend the meeting and I got a I ended up getting elected chairman of the group um, and have been that held that position ever since. The group has four primary objectives. The group tries to promote the planting and the use of warm season grass. Um, this has been the primary objective over the last few years, trying to get more and more grass in the ground because the demand for the grass has increased dra dramatically. And we work to maximize the prof profitability of, of warm season grass. Um, I've sold grass for as little as $5 a bale and as much as $70 a bale. Um, I prefer to sell it at $70 a bale, um, but we, st we started out low and, and we, we worked to, to get the price of grass higher. Uh, we assist in educating growers on the implementation of best practices for managing and harvesting the crop. We have videos, we have documents, we have all kinds of things available on our website um, dealing with this particular objective. And we support and encourage entrepreneurial activities that further develop the use of warm season grass in all areas of agriculture. We're, we're trying to we're, we're trying to encourage new markets to, to, to develop. As you can see from this slide, there are a number of different ways that, that warm season grass can be used. Uh, we've concentrated on a few of them thus far, uh, but we're hoping to, to ex expand our, our involvement in promoting different markets. The plan to promote warm season grass has been pretty simple and straightforward. We attend events. Um, we've gone to a number of different events. For example, uh, we've been at the Harrisburg Farm Show. Dan Chokas, uh, the Cooperative Extension of Penn State, invited us to participate at his booth. And we were there for a couple of years with, with Dan. Uh, thank you, Dan, for uh, that invitation. Uh, but today, we provide the poultry bedding, switchgrass poultry bedding for the poultry barn. And it's, it's incredible how that that change in the poultry barn has, has made a difference in the aroma. The smell in, in the room uh, has, has pretty much gone away. We go to Ag Progress Days in, 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 in Pennsylvania Furnace. Uh, we won't be there this year since the event was canceled, but we hope to be back there again next year in, in, in August. Uh, and we set up a booth right on the corner adjacent to the sample plot which is there behind the booth. You can just barely see the, the plants uh, behind that guy in the green jacket. Uh, and, and we had a, had a very successful event there last year and, and uh, expect to be there again this coming year. 
uh, we went to the Keystone Farm Show. That's Mike Palco um, down in York, Pennsylvania. Uh, had a 10 by 10 booth there. Uh, talked to a lot of farmers about warm season grass and got a lot of new membership for the association. We attended a number of different county fairs, primarily providing the poultry bedding for their poultry cages, uh, quite successfully uh, as, as part of uh, our efforts to get the word out on how good warm season grass is as a poultry bedding. There's one of the cages uh, at the Lycoming Fair. We hand out literature. We have a lot of literature that, that's available uh, on warm season grass. It's been developed over the, the years. This is an ad in Lancaster Farmer uh, that uh, was, was uh, part of a, a grant project to try and develop a census. Where is the grass located in, in uh, the Northeast? Uh, this is a, a piece to, that to, talks about the association um, and answers some questions. This is a piece about poultry bedding. And, and when we started our efforts on poultry bedding, uh, this is what we developed. This is a 17 page manual on pellet production using warm season grass uh, that was done by Dan Chokas and a group of students uh, at, at Penn State Cooperative Extension. Uh, when we worked our census, uh, this was the uh, handout that we developed for, for that particular event. And this is a, a document that was done by Scott Singer, uh, which is a, a best practice document uh, describing how to harvest uh, warm season grass. If, if when you harvest grass, you cut it too short, you end up with stubbles in the field that will go right through a tractor tire. Um, and and that, that certainly causes maintenance issues. This was a general publication that we did way back on, on warm season grass. And this piece was done by Sarah Wurzbacher um, when we first formed the association to try and get the word out. Uh, you can see up there it says new producer group supports grower needs in a developing industry. And it certainly has developed. Uh, in the short time we've, we've had the association. And this, of course, is our membership form. Um, so as you can see, we have a lot of publications out and available. We promote entrepreneurial activity. Um, we, we're trying to get other, others to, to promote uh, warm season grass, and, and through these entrepreneurial activities, they are doing that. Um, we partnered with the Pocono Northeast Resource Conservation and Development Council. You may remember them as the ones who developed the portable pellet unit. Um, and and uh, we, we combined with them to, to write a grant uh, and apply for, for, for funds to do training on grass pellets uh, for stoves. And you may wonder why grass pellets? Well, I can grow a crop of grass in 70 days and it takes 20 years to grow a forest. So we felt that grass pellets were the way to go. And, and we wrote the grant and we got funding to do 10 uh, sessions throughout the counties that our C and D council services. And we did on-farm grass pellet production. Um, I was the primary presenter inside. Uh, and these 10 sessions, we, we did a, about one hour session in the classroom. Um, there's a, a graph on the, on the wall of the, the cooling racks. And after an hour inside the classroom, we went outside and actually made pellets. Um, that's, that's in the yellow shirts, uh, Larry Hart Pence and his son, Dan, um, Don, excuse me, uh, making pellets with the PTO driven unit. Um, and, and they came out quite well. This is a, a video, if I can get it to run. There it goes. The white smoke is the steam. The moisture level is critical in making pellets. The brown is the dust coming off of it. And it's, uh, it's doing quite a job making, making the pellets. Poultry bedding is another area that we promote. 
uh, it, it was uh, started by Amy, Amy Barclay, did a, a study uh, on, on poultry bedding uh, with a SAR grant that she obtained. And, and there's a picture of Amy Barclay uh, working the equipment. And, and next to her is, is uh, Paul Patterson, uh, Dr. Paul Patterson from, from Penn State University. He was, he was Amy's advisor. And they were doing on-farm uh, poultry processing, poultry bedding processing. And they, they found that warm season grass worked just as well as, as the traditional wood chips or wood sawdust. Uh, that was using that being used in in poultry houses, but wood wood products are becoming more difficult to obtain, and the price has been going up. So they were looking for an alternative. Another area that we promote is silt socks. This is Frank McDonald's barn with his big square bales um, ready to ship out. Silt socks are those snake-like things you see along construction sites, and traditionally they've been filled with um, bark or, or um, mulch, wood mulch, and there's advantages to using switchgrass as opposed to using bark or, or wood mulch. When, when they're filled with, with the, the wood products, uh, they're quite heavy and it takes a special machine or a crew of men to, to put them in place, where if they're filled with switchgrass, they're quite light and, and easy to maneuver. One guy can, can lay them out. The other thing is that when, when the wood product decomposes, which they eventually do, uh, it, it leaves an acid in, as a residue, and switchgrass does not do that. So there's major advantages to using switchgrass as silk sock fillers. There's a load of bales going off the farm in Wap uh, They would come and, and pick them up and take them to the factory, grind them up and put them into their silk sock containers and then package them um, like so with shrink wrap around them to put them on a tractor trailer and ship them down the road. Commercial greenhouse heat is another area. Um, there's a greenhouse in Harmony, New Jersey that uh, uses big square bales to heat the house. They have seven and a half acres of greenhouse heated with, with switchgrass. Uh, and, and they're looking, always looking for uh, switchgrass to, to burn in their, their special furnace. Uh, Pagnotti, uh, James, James Pagnotti uh, in Hazleton has a man, mine land reclamation project that uses switchgrass. They plant, they plant switchgrass in these areas that look, look like nothing more than stone and, and the stuff grows and, and holds the soil so that it controls erosion and, and eventually replenishes the, the soil quality. Uh, gasification of warm season grass uh, for electric generation. They put, they, they burn switchgrass in this unit and produce heat and steam and make electricity. This was at a farm show day at, at Frank McDonald's farm. Um, there was also the warm season grass to drop in fuel USDA project um, where they're using pyrolysis to generate uh, this drop in fuel. Uh, it's it's quite quite a, uh, an extensive operation, but it's it's being done. In addition to all of those activities, we we go and we we speak um, at events um, about uh, so the association and warm season grass. Um, the PASA Pennsylvania Association for Sustainable Agriculture has been one place that we've we've attended uh, and and had booths there, and we've done presentations there, reaching a lot of folks. Um, on, uh, about warm season grass. We traveled to Minneapolis, Minnesota and did a presentation at the International Biomass Conference um, and, and were very well received at that event. And right here in Pennsylvania, the Mid-Atlantic Bioenergy Council had an event where they, they came on the farm as one of their tours, uh, looked at the grass, and then the next day we did a presentation at their, their, their conference in State College. And social media. Um, we have our own website. That's the address of it, awsgp.org. Um, and, and you should certainly check that out if you haven't done so already. And there's the main page of the association's uh, website. And then we have our Facebook page, which 
Uh, as you can see on the right, has a lot of participants. Uh, we have business partners in the association. Uh, they, they participate, they're businesses that benefit from warm season grass production. Uh, and we put their website links on our, uh, our, our web, website. We've applied for grants and, and following up on Amy Barclay's project, um, we've been quite successful um, with the Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education Organization. Um, we received three grants from them. Uh, the first one was a single producer scale preparation of warm season grass for poultry bedding. Uh, Sarah Wurzbacher uh, was the technical advisor on that project and we explored how to, to prepare warm season grass going from a seven to eight foot stem down to a, a, a stem less than a, an, an inch and a half and what worked, what didn't work. And we learned a tremendous amount about producing uh, poultry bedding through that grant operation. The second grant we received was led by Mike Palco and sponsored by the Pennsylvania Soil RCD Council. Uh, it was to develop markets. Uh, that's the grant that uh, funded the bedding at the farm shows. Uh, it funded the census of where's the grass, and the report uh, of that is on our website. And the grant we're working on right now is a grant that, that again is sponsored by the Penn Soil RCD Council, funding coming from. Uh, the SAR organization, and this is to produce a, uh, a trailer mounted system that will produce poultry bedding. The idea being that we will share this device or this unit uh, amongst farmers where they can produce poultry bedding on their, their farm. We got almost $30,000 on this grant to pr produce a device. Um, and there's so many of the equipment, it's, it's up at Len Reggie's shop uh, at, on his farm. and. I was up, up, and up there a couple times to check things out, and he's doing a, an amazing job putting it all together. Uh, it, it's quite a complex uh, device, uh, and the timing of the flow is, is critical so that things don't load up or bog down. Um, and I was there uh, last week, and, and uh, we identified a couple issues that, that he needs to address. But it's almost, it's almost finished, and that's going to be a future uh, presentation on the Saturday Saturday noontime um, events. Our membership dues are, are very reasonable. Uh, we get most of our funding through grants, supporting individuals is $10, a producer is $25, and a supporting business only costs 40 bucks. But you don't have to pay dues to be a member of the association. Um, we'll email you, and we have almost 300 people uh, that are receiving emails about warm season grass. There is the name of the group, the four primary objectives of the group, um, and, and I hope that I've covered and answered questions about what we're doing, how we're doing, what we're going, and where we're going forward. Um, there's the, the link to the uh, website and my email address in case you want to reach out to me. Uh, thank you, and uh, I'll switch back over to the live and uh, see whether or not you have any questions.